Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be doing the number 15 from the Amy 1 of 2011. Now, for number 15, this problem is unusually easy. To solve this problem, you just need to use a couple of cutesy dootsy algebra tricks and just do a little bit of bash. Number 15s are typically supposed to be harder than every other problem on the test, but this is not that hard compared to some of the other problems on the 2011 Amy 1. It's by no means a easy problem. It's still quite difficult, but for a number 15, it is quite easy. So without further ado, let's just get into it. For some integer m, the polynomial x cubed minus 2011x plus m has three integer roots, a, b, and c. Find the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b plus the absolute value of c. So this problem doesn't ha really have that much context. It gives us a cubic equation, and it wants us to find each of its three roots and take the sum of each of their absolute values. It also tells us that these three roots must be integers. So let, let's take a look at probably the most important part of this problem, the cubic itself. So here's the cubic we're supposed to deal with. Now, whenever you're given a cubic and some sort of relationship between the roots and the cubic, you should always think about Vietas formulas. Vietas formulas are a set of formulas that relate the different coefficients of the polynomial to each of the different roots. One such relationship would be that if we take the sum of the roots and negate it, that'll give us the coefficient for the x squared term of this. So if we negate the sum of a plus b plus c, we'll get the coefficient of the x squared term. In this case though, there is no x squared term telling us that the coefficient of the x squared term is 0. And since we know that the negative version of the sum of the three integer roots is 0, that must mean a plus b plus c itself has to have a sum of 0. Now, we can't just add this up and say that 0 is our answer, because even though a plus b plus c equals 0, one of these numbers could be negative. And that would mean that the absolute values of their sum would not be equal to zero. So anyways, this is our first Vietas relationship that we pulled out. The second one that we can pull out using Vietas is that the sum of the product of three pairs of these two roots would be equal to negative 2011. And what I mean by that is that if we take the computation AB, bc and ac that'll be equal to negative 2011. Now if you didn't understand how I got any of these two Vietas relationships, well I'm afraid I can't explain to you in this one video because Vietas relationships would take a whole other video to explain. This concept is really rich, and I really recommend for you to search it up and understand it on your own. But for the sake of simplicity, you can just assume that these equations are right because of Vietas formulas. So, using Vietas formulas, we develop these two relationships. A plus B plus C is equal to zero, so the sum of the three integer roots is equal to zero. And we deduce this because the coefficient of the x squared term is 0, and that ab plus bc plus ac is equal to negative 2011. And we deduce that because the coefficient of the x term is negative 2011. Now we could use this to try to draw a relationship between abc 
and M, but seeing how M could be anything, it's not going to really help us narrowing down what A, B, and C are. So for now, these two equations are the only equations we can deal with. A plus B plus C is equal to zero, and AB plus BC plus AC is equal to negative 2011. And using these two equations, we have to find integer values for A, B, and C. So, let's think about this. Whenever you're dealt uh, with an equation that looks like this, AB plus BC plus AC, you should always think about how you could try to factor these out into different parts. Because if you factor them out into different parts, you already know that the solutions have to be integers. And this could help you find out whether your values are factors of the number itself. So we can try factoring some of these terms to make the computation much easier. The first thing we can see is that for the first two parts of this second equation, AB plus BC, we can factor a B out of that. So we're left with B times A plus C plus AC is equal to negative 2011. Now, this doesn't really seem that helpful as there's not much we can do with this, with just this. But we can try applying Simon's favorite factoring trick and add a square to both terms. By doing so, we can factor a out of the second part, ac plus a squared, and we can factor this entire expression into two parts, a plus b times a plus c. We can do this by subtracting a from both sides, and doing so we cancel out the a on the left side, and we're left with negative a on the right side. So, we have these two equations. bc is equal to a squared minus 2011, and b plus c is equal to minus a. From here, we can actually substitute this second equation into our first equation, because we know what the value of a is in terms of b and c. Doing this, we rewrite the first equation as bc equals to negative b plus c squared, but actually we don't need to do that since negative b plus c squared is actually equal to positive b plus c squared, because both of them will be positive for the same value, so we don't actually have to negate this. We can just write b plus c squared minus 2011. So we have bc is equal to negative b plus c squared minus 2011, which probably more easier to understand is just b plus c squared is equal to 2011 plus b plus c plus bc. So this tells us that if we have two numbers b and c, if we add them up and square it, it should be equal to 2011 plus the product of the two numbers b and c. Now, this is where the unfortunate bashy part of the Amy comes in. And from here, you just have to bash out until you get these two numbers, B and C, that work. And even though it doesn't seem right, because match should never just be pure bash, Amy is a three-outer test. And the bashing you do here, compared to the entire time period, should be negligible. And the time it takes for you to bash out this B and C should probably be like 5 to 10 minutes, nothing compared to a 3 hour test. So to make this bashing easier, you would have to start at 45, because if you recall, 45 squared is equal to 2, 20, 25, and 
it's the smallest square that's larger than 2011. So you bash out from numbers greater than or equal to 45 to check if their difference is the product of two numbers that can be added up to get the square that we want. In doing so, you will eventually find that 49 square seems to work. As when you compute for 49 squared, you get 2401. And if you subtract that from 2011, you're left with 390. This is interesting because you can split two factors of 390 into two numbers that add up to 49. 39 and 10. So, here, we'd get 39 plus 10 whole squared would equal to 2011 plus 39 times 10. So, it makes it pretty clear that our values for B and C are 39 and 10, respectively. And since B plus C is equal to negative A, in this case, B plus C would equal 49. So if 49 is equal to negative A, A is equal to negative 49. That means if we take the absolute values of each of these, we would just take their positive connotations. So the positive version of negative 49 would give us 49. Positive version of 39 would give us 39. And positive version of 10 would give us 10. And adding all this up, we would get 98 as our end sum. And 98 is the sum of the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B plus the absolute value of C, giving this as our end answer. So in the end, we just solved this Amy 15 using a little bit of algebra tricks, just some Vietas formulas and Simon's favorite factoring trick to draw this one relation that helped us solve the problem. This relation was BC equals to B plus C whole squared minus 2011, which we wrote to B plus C whole squared equals to 2011 plus BC, in order to make it easier to comprehend. And then using this and the fact that 45 is the smallest number that when squared would yield a number greater than 2011, we just bashed out a couple cases until we got to 49 squared, from which we divided 49's difference, 49 squares difference with 211, and we found that their difference of 390 could be split into 39 and 10, which we set up as our values of B and C. So, in the end, we solved this Amy problem pretty simply, just using a little bit of algebra and a little bit of bash. But doing so, you probably just solved the highest ranking problem on the Amy 1 of 2011, showing how, if you're just patient and creative enough, you can solve any problem, no matter what level it is.